In this Photoshop Elements how-to project, we're going to be using a fill letters with photo technique that gives you a lot of flexibility. Hi, I'm George, and if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Also click on share and subscribe. When you subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications of my new videos, and check out my channel for my complete training for Photoshop Elements. It's the best way to learn how to use this program. All right, let's get to it. For this Photoshop Elements Fill Letters with Photo project, we'll be using two pictures. They're right down here in my photo bin. Now you can download these and I have a download link for that in the description. But we'll start off first here with a brand new file. I'll just close this down, get that out of the way. You know, minimize that for a minute. So I'll go up to File, New and Blank File. I'll leave this file at the default Photoshop Elements size, which is 6 wide by 4 tall by 300 pixels per inch and choose OK and I'll just have mine docked right there. Now the first step is to make a duplicate of the background layer. Just right click where it says background and choose duplicate layer. There we go. This will be our white text layer. I'll be doing two text layers. One as white and one is for our palm tree picture down there. Okay now come down to the background layer and I want to bring in this picture here. It's, it's the sandy beach with the water just over the top of the sand down here. You can bring this in any way you want. This time I'm just going to grab from the photo bin and drag it straight up. There we go. Easy to do. Now it's not quite the right size. You can just stretch this out to fit. It doesn't matter if the image is distorted a little bit because we're only using the texture out of this anyway, so that's perfectly fine. And there we go. This will be the coloration inside of our lettering. At the top of here, as you can see that, so just take this and drag it down so it's between those two white layers. Now go up to your background layer. There it is. And we'll be putting our text layer above this layer. Make sure your colors are black, foreground, white background. If they're like this, just click on this little icon right there to send it back at the defaults. Go to the Type tool right here. And I have mine set at Cooper Standard Black Italic. It's a real standard typeface, and I'm sure you probably have that on your computer right now. And then for the basic type, I have this set at Centered. The color is black. The size is 124 points right there and the leading is 81 points. And since we're centered, come into the center of your page, just someplace around the center. You can judge that from the three up there. There we go. And we'll type in peace and quiet. There it is. And for the and, we're doing the ands on the ampersand. And quiet. There we go. And then choose OK. And let's bring it down to about the right position. Now obviously the and is way too large. Let's go back to the Type tool and then just select just that just by going to the left hand side and pulling over that AND. That selects just that character. And we're going to change the size of the text right down here. Bring this down to 48 point. There we go. And notice the spacing is all wrong now too. So come down here where it says letting. Don't deselect. Come down where it says letting and change this to 51 point instead of 81 point and choose OK. And there we go, there's the text all nice and ready to go. And just kind of pull it into the center. Now it should snap right to the center. If you're not seeing it snap in there, go up here to View, come down to Snap To, and have Layers and Document Bounds selected. They should already be that way, that's the defaults. And it should just kind of snap right to the center of your page. Now you want to take this and be able to see through the letters, leaving the white background, and then seeing that beach scene in behind. A couple of easy steps to do that. First, hold the control key down and click on the thumbnail for the text layer. What that does is it selects all the contents of that layer. In this case, that's text. If I had something else on here, a piece of clip art or something, it would select that instead. So there's our text layer. We can now hide that. Come down to our background copy. This is our white layer. And then click on the layer mask button right there. What that does is it shows us anything that was selected in here and everything else is hidden on that layer, so we're getting the background showing in behind the text. Now that's the opposite of what we want, so easy to fix that. We're still on the thumbnail over here. Make sure you see the light blue outline around the layer mask, and then go up to Filter, come down to Adjustments, and Invert, and that just inverts that. So now we've essentially cut a hole in our white page, and we're seeing the photo in behind. And you can use this technique to put anything you want behind this layer even multiple layers, 
doesn't matter. As long as it's beneath this, you'll be seeing it through that hole that we have here in that layer. Now with our beach image down here, it's not quite right as you can see. I'm seeing the horizon in here and I have the sky up there. I don't want to have any of that. So I'll come down here, make sure you're on this layer and then just pull this up and I'll pull it clear up until this water line up here is above the picture. And then come down to the bottom right there in the middle, grab that control handle and pull that straight down until I'm below the text, pull it down just a little bit further. So I need to adjust it up and down just a little bit and do this back and forth just a bit until you have the whole image filled with this gradient in here and we're no longer seeing that water line at the top. And then choose OK. All right there we go. So there is our basic concept in here, the basic way of doing this and we're getting a nice white layer and we're seeing whatever is in behind that layer, underneath that layer, through those letters. And this can be used for a lot of different project styles. We'll now take this one step further and change that background to something else. So go up here to the white layer. There it is. Let's go back to the photo bin and I'll now bring in this image. Again, bring it in any way you want. I'll do it differently this time. I'll just bring the image up and then I'll grab the background layer, drag it in. Any way you want to bring that in is just fine. So there we are. And I'll put it over, oh, about here. I don't want this too close to the edge. So bring it over. Right about there looks pretty good. All right, now I want to get rid of that boat right back in there. So I'll zoom in on that. There we are. And then grab one of your selection tools. I'll just grab the polygonal lasso and do a quick little lasso around this. There we go. And then go up to Edit. Come down to Fill Selection. And I have this set at Content, Aware, Choose OK, and the boat's gone. All right, and then Deselect. Then I'll zoom back out to Fit Screen. OK, nice and clean. Now I want to bring our letters back up again. And all we have to do is punch the same hole in this layer that we have down here in the white layer. And you can do that just by copying the layer mask up there. So hold the Alt key down, take this layer mask, pull it straight up, and we're now seeing through both of those layers down to that background layer. At this point, of course, you can just hide that white layer if you want to. We're not using that now for this discussion. Okay, next couple of things to do here. I want to go back up to this layer and let's put a bevel on this. Make sure you're looking at the image side and not the layer mask side. And then come down here to Styles. You should be seeing bevels right here at the top. And the one you want is this bottom right hand corner right there. It's called Simple Sharp Pillow Emboss. Click on that and there is that emboss effect. Now showing a little bit of an emboss effect up there. Notice if I move the picture a bit, I can actually lose that edge just by kind of pulling that around. Notice that the whole thing though is moving. I'm seeing everything move, not just that little bit up there. So let's go back here to layers. And the reason why everything is moving is because as I move this up and down, the layer mask moves as well. Let me just undo that move. Oh, okay, we're fine. So you want to move the image without moving the letters. That little icon right there, this little link thing, click on that, unlinks those two. So now the layer mask is going to stay put and I can now move the picture up just a bit and that edge goes away. The reason why that edge was in there is because I was right up against the edge of this picture. So make sure your picture is just a little bit larger than your image, then you won't get that beveled edge on the outside of that picture. Then I'll click that again, keep the, these two now linked together. All right, so far so good, but the coloration is not what I want. I want to adjust those values. Let's first do the text in here, peace and quiet. Come down to the beach image, and we'll put an adjustment layer above this image. So go up here to layer, come down to new adjustment layer and choose levels. Where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask, check that. Choose OK. There we are. Now here's all the values in that picture. They're all pretty close together. I want to bring the black side way in here until it's up where it begins to slope up. Same thing for the right side, bring it to where it begins to slope up. And that's going to be pretty close to what I used previously. Now to be exactly what I used before, let's set this at 133 on the black side. I'm already there. That's fine. Leave the middle value at 1. That's fine. And I have my white value at 210. There we go. So 133, 1, and 210. 
just a little bit into the beginning of that slope. And we can close that down. All right, that is done. Real nice gradient color in here and texture, all made from that picture of that beach with some water on it. Let's now do the same thing to adjust the values of our background picture. And it's on the background image up here. Go back up to layer, come down to new adjustment layer. Same thing, levels. Once again, make sure this checkbox is checked. Choose OK. That limits the effect to just that one layer. And now if we adjust this, let's have a lot more values in here. I can't just match the edges. A lot more values. This time I'm going to be bringing in the darks just a little bit. Just kind of adding a bit more contrast to the dark side. I actually used 24 on that. Let's bring the whites in a little bit. Brighten the whites up. And what I used was 204. I'll just type that in here. And then let's also adjust the midtone values. Move the slider to the left. That lightens up the image. We're going to go pretty light on this one. And the number that I actually used on this was 2.31. Quite a ways to the left. Just lightens everything up. A bit more contrasty and a lot brighter. And that just helps to separate out the background from the foreground and gives us a nice, bright, more cheerful background image. And there we go. That's all there is to it. Don't forget to click on like and share and subscribe. And look at the playlist in the bottom right hand corner for more of these fun text projects. All right, and I'll see you next time.